Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and tonight we're going to be discussing our Super Tuesday results, the implications for the Democratic primary, whether or not I think any of these candidates can beat President Trump, and the reactions from the Bernie camp. If you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Okay, so Super Tuesday, a surprisingly good night from Joe Biden. I must say, I never thought good old Sleepy Joe had it in him. I, I will be honest, he did a lot better. But I do think that it has a lot to do with how the Democratic Party coalesced around Joe Biden. So I, I, will, I won't give it to Joe. Because I don't think he actually had a lot to do with this. I'm not going to lie. I've heard things today that his campaign staff are actually limiting his engagements because he is so gaff prone that it's insane. I saw a tweet today from a journalist, Tim Pool, if you are familiar with him. He uh, put out his phrase that he so often does, uh, how many grains of sand make a heap in that how many Joe Biden gaffes? where they start to not be gaffes anymore. They start to be something extra. So I don't give it to Joe, but I do give it to his campaign team and to the Democratic Party. They had a plan. They had, they didn't, they didn't have a plan, but they reacted to the situation of Bernie Sanders' remarkably good start with precision and efficiency. Right or wrong, they played this the right way. Again, right or wrong. So Joe Biden, 380 delegates thus far. And you may be saying to yourself, thus far, Super Tuesday was yesterday. <laughs> uh, and you would be correct. A very wise observation. You are. Uh, which brings me to this right here. California has not reported. Totally. Bernie has a significant amount of delegates. Or, or of the percentage of votes, uh, as you can perhaps see here. Uh, he has currently 33.6% of the total votes, and Joe Biden is at 24.9, with 87% of the counties reporting. And I don't know what the delay is. I have heard nothing of why there is such a delay. But the important, the more important number, perhaps, is the forecast, because everybody knows Bernie's going to win. He's going to win California. So the forecast of delegates is actually more important than the current delegate count, which the New York Times has here. Again, I'll reiterate, a lot of criticism for the Times, but very excellent data. Very excellent. So estimated delegates, Joe Biden ends up with 670, Bernie 589. Whether or not... Two or three swing in either direction really doesn't matter, at least for now. The point is, there's two big takeaways. Biden is winning, and it's not over. Typically, after Super Tuesday, there is a clear front runner, a clear one. Not in this case. Not in this case. Every primary is going to be battled. Every single one. So we're going to see, and, and this actually, the coalescing, before I say that, Bloomberg has dropped out as well. Mike Bloomberg has dropped out. I'll go back to this really quick. Bloomberg got 12 delegates and um, actually more votes than Elizabeth Warren, 1.7 million votes, which is a significant percentage. So Bloomberg got 1.7 million votes. He has dropped out and endorsed Joe Biden. So that will help him in the short term but I don't think I don't think as much as people think I don't think all 1.7 of the million of those people go to Joe Biden I think a good amount stay home if some will go to Bernie maybe 10 15 percent 
a plurality, let's say, will go to Biden, probably 40%. I'm just guessing, but I think these are uh, uh, educated guesses. So maybe 40% go to Biden and the rest stay home. I think half, I, I, I really could see half of these people staying home. Like, I'm not voting for Joe. I'm not voting for Joe Biden. So we'll see what happens. And in particular, because it's not over and there's no one to take the attention off of Joe Biden, he's going to have to talk. <laughs> he's going to have to open his mouth. So we're going to see what will happen in the coming days. Warren, shockingly silent, shockingly silent. And I think that is because, and I have said this in the past, and I say, and I will stand by it. It is because she's a liar. She does not care about any of the things that she's saying. I don't believe she actually even believes them. She's waiting to see who's going to win. That's what she's waiting to do. Because she was kind of nudging Bernie when it looked like Bernie after Nevada. When it looked like Bernie had this thing in the bag. She was kind of nudging at him like, hey, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I throw my weight behind you because 1.6 million votes. That's not nothing. That's not nothing. It's a, it's a very sizable per percentage, in fact. And she's nudging Bernie for the vice presidency. But then all of a sudden, Joe, Sleepy Joe takes off. I think she's waiting to see who's going to win. I really do. She's waiting to see who's going to win. Not even that. Not even that. She's an opportunist. She's, I've never said she's not smart. I do believe she is. I, I think she's a very smart, very cunning politician. She's going to wait for the right moment. That moment where it looks like when her value is at its highest. And then she's going to throw her weight. So when it, maybe, you know, maybe Joe has some more gaffes. Maybe he has some gaffes that are, aren't able to just be swept under the rug. Like... Like, oh, that's, there's crazy Uncle Joe always, you know, mixing people up. Um, and she's going to wait for that moment, then throw her delegate. She's going to get the most out of it. Be like, yo, put me in that cabinet. Get me in the cabinet. Because she's still young enough. Unlike, I would say, Bernie. I would also say Bloomberg. And, and definitely Joe Biden. She's still young enough where she could run in 2024. She might be able to run in 2028. So... Uh, she has she has some leverage she's going to wait for the right moment and throw that behind the candidate when it's most beneficial to her and as far as strategy goes good on you but you're not someone with integrity you i do not believe you are a person with integrity i don't that being said the bernie supporters um they're calling out the not illegality, but the the cronyism would perhaps be a good word. The cronyism of the, the democratic establishment. Like, it's, it's pretty well accepted that had Warren thrown her weight behind Sanders, he would have won Massachusetts right here. He would have won Massachusetts. I think that's fair. I mean, look, Elizabeth Warren, 21%. Bernie, twenty six percent. You combine that, was that forty seven percent, forty eight? If you add the point six and points and point seven, forty eight percent against Biden's thirty three. That's a no brainer. And I believe also that he would have won uh, Maryland as well. So that's two states for Bernie. Uh, that I don't think that would have totally taken out his lead, but it would have been enough. It, it would have narrowed it. I should say, would have narrowed it. And every delegate is going to count in this thing going forward. Every single delegate, which is good for me. <laughs> I got, I got plenty to talk. I got plenty to talk about here. If Bernie had run away with this thing, I'd be like, all right, well, I uh, guess we'll see you at the DNC. <laughs> but no, I got plenty to talk about. That's good for me. Um, so the coalescing around Biden has Bernie supporters saying that this is illegitimate. It's illegitimate. I made the point yesterday, and I stand by it that, yes, I, personally, I don't care who any other politician endorses. I vote for who I'm going to vote for. So, and, and I suspect 
at least a good amount of people feel that way. But at the same time, it's this is this is a tough one because it's clear that they're the establishment is out to get Bernie. It's very very clear. And yet people still vote. People still go out and vote. Nobody's telling Klobuchar supporters in Minnesota, for example, like, oh, you know, Amy endorsed Joe Biden, so you are therefore required to go and vote for Joe Biden. Not only that, I've heard a lot of Bernie supporters say Bernie is, is the most people's second choice. That didn't seem to play out too well. That did not seem to play out because when Buttigieg and when Klobuchar dropped out, you didn't really see that those numbers reflected. And you may say, look, there's only one state where that's directly applicable. And well, yeah, it is only one state, but you still lost. So, so it's going to be brutal. It's going to get more brutal. Sanders is already going after Joe. And which reminds me, and today Joe mixed up his... Uh, his wife and his younger sister, which, you know, happens to everyone. But again, going back, how many grains of sand make a heap? Some people, even even some people on the right were like, this is just an, like an endearing moment. Like, you know, he turned around, he's like, oh, you, you guys, you switched on me. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think he didn't know. I think he did not know. And... I'll, 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 I'll end with this. I'll end with this. Similar to yesterday. Nope. None of these guys are beating Trump. None of them. If the election were held today. I can't see the future. If it were held today, this would be a landslide. Absolute landslide. Because I think even more so. In 2016, 10-15% of Bernie supporters turned around and voted for Trump. Now, I don't think the Trump number is going to be higher. But the number of abstentions, you'll say people who are say, Bernie or bust. I don't care. It's not Bernie. I'm not voting. That number is going to be crazy high. I think people are going to be shocked by how high it is. Because you know, you know, the polls are going to come out after the conventions. Because... After the Republican convention, which I believe is in North Carolina, I'm not certain, but I believe the Republican convention is in North Carolina, and I know for a fact the DNC is in Milwaukee. After the conventions, it's going to come out, all the polls, saying Biden's up, Biden's winning, Biden's winning. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, guarantee you all the polls have Biden. Despite the clear logic <laughs> of Trump being the incumbent, the ex and the excellent economy. All the polls are going to say Biden, 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 and the pollsters are once again going to be shocked by how many Bernie supporters stay home. They're going to be shocked. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube, like this video, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.